Hey kitties! Let's learn something! Hooray! I don't want to learn something that makes my brain hurt! <laughs> um, now, someone brought it to my attention that another uh, famous, well, infamous, uh, <laughs> YouTube uh, photo blogger uh, copied my video where he used uh, tin foil to cover up uh, a, a lens cap and they poked a hole in it. It poked a really large hole in it, too. I saw the, <laughs> the gigantic hole that they poked. <laughs> and the tin foil. So you drill a hole. I make a video about this months ago. You can actually make a uh, a pinhole camera. Turn any camera into a pinhole camera. The results are very artsy. Um, that somebody copied my video, but they did it wrong too. They stuck a they stuck a safety pin. They went in. Yeah, they made a big asshole in there. It really only requires a very very tiny, just like the very very tip. Anyway, they copied my video, so for that I have to go. <coughs> Because <laughs> you copied my video. Not that I really give a damn. Other people were like, Oh my god, look at this. He's copying your video. I don't care. <laughs> Say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. Or some sort of crap like that. Anyway, uh, Yannick. Yeah, I know you're watching this video, you squirrely little nut. <laughs> no, he's a great guy, actually. I'm just making fun of him. Just as I make fun of myself all the time. Um, he wrote a couple of articles based upon some of the things that he knew and that I said, and the same thing that you guys discovered, of course this is from a prior video, I was talking about this radioactive lens because it's got thorium oxide dope in it. Doped is when you add something to glass or something to something else, you say you've doped it. Not dope as in smoking dope, but uh, you've doped the glass, you've added, like lead, lead glass has that very, uh, you know, they make little crystalline figures out of the crap, and it's got a real sparkly uh, look to it. That's because it's got a really high index of refraction by adding lead to it. Well, as is the case with glass, you need lanthanum oxide, or in this case, radioactive thorium oxide, or niobium oxide, and any one of another of other elements to the glass. And he wrote an article about, uh, you know, why I've always said the glass is evil. We have to use glass obviously to capture the image but people that know about optics or people that have been shooting photography for a long time i mean you don't it's like you could be an expert painter and not know what the hell is in your paints or what the hell leonardo da vinci wasn't like that of course he experimented with all sorts of funky pigments and some of them sucked as we all know about or anybody that knows about leonardo da vinci so he experimented and he knew about pigments but you know, to be an expert painter, you don't have to know about pigments and all that crap. You just have to know what's best and what works and what not. Some people want to know this stuff. Um, so most people that have a lot of lenses or have been shooting for 60 years, they don't know any of this crap. And that's perfectly fine, too. But I'm going to make a series of videos here. And it's going to be crap. You're not going to learn anywhere else. But it's important. And if you uh, put up with uh, my pathetic voice and my ugly face, I guarantee you're going to learn something here. And it's going to be neat. And uh, at the very least... You can wow your photographic buddies, and they'll be like, wow, that's cool. <laughs> well, it's cool to some people, anyway. Um, about why a lens is an electrical circuit. And every lens manufacturer knows this. It's why they dope lenses a certain way to change the dielectric permittivity and magnetic permeability of the electromagnetic spectrum near and far, i.e. infrared through UV, well, the near UV a visible light spectra that is transmitted through a multi-element lens. But anyway, Yannick I wrote a couple of articles about lenses and uh, they uh, posted some of these uh, these mental midgets, these uh, intellectual uh, knuckle draggers, these, uh, these uh, subhuman slime balls that uh, a lot of them hang over on uh, what I like to call diaper and pee review. You can guess what that is. And they were just attacking the crap out of him and uh, Someone said, oh, he got some of those ideas. The only other person that's mentioned stuff like that is that uh, angry photographer asshole. And I don't care if they attack me, but they were attacking me endlessly. They are talking about true uh, depth in a lens. Now, there are two different types of actual depth that are in the lens. You know, there's the renditional depth, which you have, and there's translation or perceptual depth. Perceptual depth or translational depth is due to tonal gradation or microcontrast or intertonal transmission that occurs through the lens. 
it is the intratonal transmission that has to do with uh, the contrast, the micro contrast. Not the resolution, but the micro contrast. But there's another sort of resolution that has to do with render depth. They, some people refer to it as Zeiss pop. They, you'll actually do a Google search, type in uh, uh, Zeiss effect or uh, Zeiss pop. Zeiss pop or, yeah, Zeiss 3D effect. You know, an icon has lenses like that, too. It's not just Zeiss. I mean, Zeiss makes some real loser lenses, too. Especially many of their really wide lenses. Um, but anyway, they excoriated him, and uh, it pissed me off, because these people were... These people, most people do, in fact. It's okay not to know or be ignorant of something. That's fine. But don't pretend that you know something and start spouting off BS, because that's what pisses me off, to know it. People think that a lens is nothing other than metal, Forget about the motors and all the other modern crap. It's just nothing other than glass and metal, or glass and plastic, as is the case now. And that is not the case. Now, it is the case that most people that uh, are into optics don't know a damn thing uh, about uh, electrical theory or field theory. And these people with no far-reaching experiences of lenses have no worth or value in anything they say. They'll, they'll buy a halfway decent lens and they'll declare it king and not know a damn thing about anything better. And that's perfectly fine too because lenses are expensive and nobody's owned, very few people, excuse me, have owned hundreds and hundreds of lenses like I have or some other people have. And, and uh, if you actually get in some of the forums where people have been shooting 40 years or they work in camera stores and, you know, they've messed around with all the best contacts and Zeiss and Leica lenses and the current lenses, I mean, they're sitting there back rolling their eyes at these assholes that uh, talk about, you know, how great a Sigma fart lens. I mean, these people know better. I mean, I know better. Um, but they scoff at the idea uh, that there's actually a 3D effect or 3D pop in a lens. And that is what pisses me right the hell off, because it is damn untrue. Um, the Zeiss is certainly no owner of 3D pop or uh, the Zeiss effect. Not Nikkor lenses have this, contacts, Leica lenses, I mean, um, Sigma doesn't have it in any other lens. They do to a certain degree. There is a spectral range that has not yet been quantified by anybody as so far as the 3D effect, but it has to do with parallax, binocular disparity especially. Um, but all things being equal, including, uh, you know, the aperture of the lens and the focal length, which is taken into consideration, there is an actual um, difference between uh, the translational or perceptual depth, where a lens has a certain intertonal transmission quality, and uh, obviously this has a lot to do with MTF charts, and we can get into that later, of the translational or perceptual depth, like the higher micro contrast lenses have better perception of depth and detail. That's one thing, and of course aperture plays into this, and focal length plays into that, and that's a no-duh, I know all of that. But all things being equal, there is something else, and it has to do with rendered depth. Because glass is evil. Now what the hell does that mean? You know, we gotta have glass lenses, or in some cases fluorite lenses, which are very fragile. Or even plastic lenses. Some of uh, a few of Nikon's really expensive lenses uh, have to have aspherical elements, and to keep costs down, Nikon said, "Screw it," because it's too damn expensive to make those lenses. To make those lenses cost-effective, Nikon went with plastic, <laughs> like the 28 to 70 2.8. That lens has got two plastic aspherical aspherical elements are damn expensive to make. Okay, so that lens has got plastic. But that's irrelevant. But the point is the actual rendered depth in a lens. And here's something that you're not going to read in any photography magazine or on any photography board, but it is 100% effing refutable. And anybody out there that says otherwise can kiss my ass. My smooth ass, by the way. <laughs> And not talking about the people watching this video, but the people that are on like some of these boards, you know, that have their thumb up their ass, these mental midgets, these knuckle-dragging, uh, you know, uh, knuckle-dragging lemmings that are just morons. And here's a fact, and it's irrefutable by anybody. Lenses are designed as special electrical circuits for the passage of light. Okay, every G-damn G lens made in the past 50 plus years, depending on who made it, is specifically designed as an electrical circuit for the desired effect of passing near, infrared, 
and far UV towards the end of UV visible spectrum light according to manufacturer specs. Now this is achieved through uh, aspherical elements, but it's especially achieved through ED doped glass. Uh, Nikon's famous ED glass or extra dispersion glass has a very high content of lanthanum oxide, which replaced, as I made in the prior video, the thorium oxide, which is radioactive. But there's also niobium oxide and uh, and zirconium oxide, and titanium dioxide, and calcium fluoride, and there's a few others. But light is a coaxial circuit, okay? It doesn't matter if the lens has four elements or eight elements, and more glass lens, the more elements, the worse it gets. But it's not strictly based upon the number of elements, because some elements are hugely thick. Some elements, individually, are far thicker than four elements of, uh, you know, a much thinner rear element, for example. So you can't say, well, you know, well, that's one, two, three, or four elements. Like, well, that one element might be as thick as five other normal elements. Whatever you define normal as uh, in the structure of that lens. But this is irrefutable. Light is... A, what the hell do you think is powering your solar panels? Uh, back in the old days when uh, they used uh, glass insulators on the power lines, and uh, there would be a lightning strike and the power would go out. Uh, man, the lions in back then hated it because we had the old glass insulators. You remember they're blue and green and purple or some, most of them were clear. When they turned the power back on, especially back in the days before uh, electricity uh, 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 substations whatnot were perfected to actually uh, gradually increase the charge, they'd throw it back on and there'd be a pulse. Uh, through the power lines, and those uh, glass capacitors would explode like an effing bomb. Pow! And the lion's women would go, SHIT! Because they know they'd have to get on the ladder and get out there and replace those glass capacitors and possibly fry their ass, have to turn off the power. The same reason back in the old days, in the old days, I just mean like 20 years ago, some of the inferior glass bowls from China, when you put them in your microwave to heat up your soup, the glass would shatter, and once in a while it would explode. And it wasn't due to air bubbles uh, in the glass, however that was the case sometimes. It is due to the fact that the EM radiation was coming in to heat your food, was also charging up uh, the bowl, and the bowl reached uh, its maximum dielectric permittivity. I'll show you a video here in the next video of dielectric permittivity and the bowl blew. Pow! Um, light is a coaxial circuit, and every lens is a circuit designed by these lens manufacturers for their own desired spectral specs So how they want the transmission to come out. Obviously, they want maximum uh, rendition as far as resolution, IQ, coma, chromatic aberration. They're going for all of that, but these lenses are doped with niobium oxide and Nikon's uh, lanthanum oxide. And, uh, and the zirconium oxide, and titanium oxide, and calcium fluoride. These are the secret recipes of Nikon, Canon, Zeiss, and everybody. And they don't talk about this crap because each one has their own little recipe. Okay, it's not strictly about optics. It is about electrical transmission and the coaxial nature of light and the actual transmission from the front element to the rear element projected out to your sensor. And all lenses are designed like this. And you could talk to any lens expert in the world and they would say, yeah, that's exactly correct. Why the hell do you think they dope these, uh, these lenses? What do you think is the nature of a higher frequency light? What do you think chromatic aberration is? Why do you think the red end of the spectrum and the blue end of the spectrum don't converge? And why do you think they're adding in these elements to correct for chromatic aberration? We'll talk about that in the next video with the ongoing videos, okay? Make things simple. Simple.